The next idea in our Geometry Toolkit in Chapter 6 is called Converse Statements. And uh, what I'd like you to write down right now in your toolkit is, right up here, uh, when you reverse a conditional statement, the new statement is called a converse. Not all converses are true. So first of all, what is a conditional statement? What a conditional statement is, it's something like this. If, and then something, and then, then something else. So there's an example of a statement down here. So it says, statement, if the figure has four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. Okay, now that statement happens to be true. If the figure does have four sides, then it's definitely called a quadrilateral. So what if you reverse it? What it would look like is something like this. The converse would be, if the figure is a quadrilateral, then it has four sides. So the original statement is definitely true over here, but is the converse true? And the answer to that is yes, because all quadrilaterals have four sides. So that would be an example of where both the original statement and the converse are true. Let me give you another statement here. What if we said, if the dog has a bone, then the dog is happy? Well, that would be true. If you gave a dog a bone, they, they, they would be happy. Now, what if you reverse it? If the dog is happy, then the dog has a bone. Is that always true? Well, not necessarily, because are there other reasons why a dog could be happy? Well, yeah, there's certainly a lot of them. So I would write false. It could be happy for other reasons, like, for instance, maybe it's going on a walk. Maybe the owner's petting the dog. Uh, maybe they're chasing a ball. But there could be lots of different reasons why that dog is happy. So just because the dog is happy doesn't mean the dog has a bone. So that's how converse statements works.